Hey guys, welcome back to another one. In this video, we're going to look at why the overall crypto market has dropped like a rock, and it all has to do with a Chinese construction company. Um, so we'll dig into that, and then we will find out exactly why this is happening. If you're interested in this content, please like and subscribe. I know it's slightly different than the normal content that I normally put out, but uh, this news article has really rocked the market, so I thought I would dig into it and provide some data for you guys. So just digging into this article, as the problems related to the Chinese property development giant, China Evergrande continues to mount investors in everything from stocks to Bitcoin and the broader crypto market are worrying about the uh, potential spillover effects. Um, and it's a potential Chinese Lehman moment. And we'll dig into exactly why that is. First and foremost, it's because China's second largest property developer, which is China Evergrande, holds more than $300 billion in debt. And even uh, the Celsius CEO says BTC not being able to break 50,000 may have more to do with China than regulation FUD. And there's a lot of regulation FUD going on, as we know, um, especially because today's Monday and, you know, Congress is back into it. And why, why is this happening? Because China property fears spread beyond Evergrande. And we will dig exactly why this is. It has to do with the government and what uh, the, you know, essentially the Chinese officials will do in order to handle this situation. I thought that um, this guy has a pretty good breakdown of the three different situations that can happen. Uh, the Chinese government can allow Evergrande to fail and it will contain the panic uh, just within you know, that company, that sector, or the Chinese government loses control of the situation and then contagion uh, takes over all of China and then we have a broader financial crisis. Or the third option is the Chinese government papers over the situation, socializes the losses, and pretends nothing ever happened. And he says number three is normally what happens, but, you know, we'll kind of sit back and see. And what is this company? Uh, as I kind of alluded to earlier, it's a humongous um, real estate company in China. So the Evergrande Group, just looking at Wikipedia, is the uh, second largest property development it's the uh, 122nd largest group by revenue in the entire world, which is actually really huge. And it sells apartments mostly to middle and, you know, upper income dwellers. And in 2018, it was the world's most valuable real estate company. So let that sink in. World's most valuable. And why is it important for the uh, middle income dwellers? Because the middle income in China has been exploding over the past couple of years. And we can check out some articles here. This one's even an older article, but just checking out the state of China and how things have rapidly grown so much and why these companies, especially this company, Evergrande, means so much. Um, so a lot of people have been driven uh, to the urban population areas. It's increased by, you know, half a billion people in the past couple decades, which is insane. Um, you can look at the stats, you can look at some of the satellite imagery, but essentially what's going on is people from, you know, the center part of China, they're moving to the urban areas because that's where, you know, all the technology is, that's where the school is, that's where you can have your better life and live that middle income. And that potentially could drive a lot of changes. Another thing that's happening is China's banks are bursting with uh, U.S. dollars. And that is a bad thing in this situation in particular um, because a mountain of, of dollars on deposit in China has grown so large that banks are struggling to loan the currency. And these banks, they're like, hey, I've got all this money and I just need to give it away. So if there is a company like, you know, Evergrande who's building and they need to take on these loans, you know, the Chinese uh, banks, they definitely have the money available and they want to give it away. Um, another aspect that's coming into hand here is the divergence between the Chinese economy and the U.S. economy. So Chinese authorities, they're trying to keep the economy growing steadily as the world's attempting from, you know, the COVID pandemic. I know this is happening in the U.S., but it's also happening, you know, across the world in different aspects. So 
Chinese or Beijing's monetary policy has diverged from the U.S. and other major developed countries. Uh, as we know, the Chinese, even though COVID, you know, originated in China, it also they were able to handle it in a different way. Whereas I don't know if it's just media, but it's not as bad there as it is, you know, in the U S so they were able to, you know, continue on with their life essentially when the U S we were still going through lockdowns and heck, we're still trying to live with it today. But one of the major factors is the Chinese 10 year government bond yields is about 3%, a little over 3%. And the U S counterpart is lower at 1.6%. So the bond yields, I know they're boring and totally different from crypto, but, you know, big money loves bond yields and they will just put their money in safe bonds if they can. Uh, So 3%, you know, that's, you know, double what the U.S. has. So more people would be willing to move their money into these Chinese bonds. And one of these big names is BlackRock. And we'll dig into BlackRock in particular, why this is such a huge deal. So it announced on May 12th that it's received approval to start working with the Chinese companies in a way where BlackRock owns most of, you know, the operation. And in previous uh, years, the Chinese companies would have to have a majority share. So the Chinese companies would have to have this 50.1%. But, you know, China is trying to like that previous article said, pull in more companies. And BlackRock is one of the big ones. Goldman Sachs, there's all these other big investment firms. They're starting to work with Chinese companies. And this is huge because several Chinese banks are now restricting credit to the Evergrande um, because of the uh, risk of debt. And just looking into this a little bit, several large Chinese banks are restricting credit to the Evergrande amid mounting concerns about the uh, developer's financial health. And if we scroll down a little bit, one of the major Evergrande creditors uh, includes China Construction Bank. And if we check this article over here, BlackRock is partnering with, you know, where they own 50.1%, so the majority share, they're you know partnering with China Construction Bank. And China Construction Bank, I didn't pull up an article for it, but these guys are, you know, one of the main banks in charge of this huge um Chinese growth. Um, they're building all of these apartment complexes, they're building essentially making a city look like what looked like this into this. It was the uh, Chinese construction bank. And now BlackRock is partnered with these huge, uh, you know, construction banks. So another thing that's coming into hand, not only BlackRock, but Fidelity, you know, on a couple surveys, they say that 50, about 50% of institutional investors hold Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. I know guys, I'm finally getting into crypto and how this all ties together. So just stay with me. Um, and then in the future, uh, Fidelity is saying that about 71%, so over three quarters essentially of institutional investors plan on buying crypto. So a lot of big money is flowing into crypto. And as much as we like you guys, the retail investors, we don't move the price of Bitcoin up or down, especially 8% when the market cap is almost a trillion dollars. That's not something that us as retail investors can do. This is only something that, you know, big money can do. As they say, swim with the whales because the whales are who can move, you know, Cardano down 11% in one day, XRP rippled down 13, 14%, Solana down 14%. That's not something the retail investors can do. I know we did it with AMC and we did it with uh, GameStop, but that is a one-off for the most part. And let's see, here is this article that ties it all together. So circling back to BlackRock again, Um, BlackRock is starting to add crypto to its balance sheet and BlackRock is the world's largest asset manager with a 9.5 trillion assets under management. So BlackRock, once again, is the same company who's partnering with the Chinese uh, construction bank, who is once again, partnering with the Evergrande to build up these Chinese cities. And this isn't just happening with BlackRock, but this is the one link that I found just for this video. I could find multiple uh, links just like this 
because the American institutions are partnering with Chinese companies and they're now getting the lion's share, um, you know, that 50.1% instead of what they had before. Um, if anything happens in China, that will have a devastating effect in the U S. So these large companies, they are going to start pulling their money out of their riskier assets and that being crypto right now. So essentially that is what's happening to the crypto market right now. We kind of have to sit back, you know, and just see what happens with this whole uh, Chinese situation. If you guys like this video, please let me know in the comments below and I will see you guys on the next one.